Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 13, converting between fractions and decimals using equivalent fractions. Classwork example one says representations of rational numbers in the real world. Following the opening exercise in class discussion, describe what we need to know how to represent rational numbers in different ways. Okay, so our class discussion was asking, I asked where we would use fractions, and then I asked where, where would you use decimals in the real world? And the answer is very, um, for example, decimals, we could use money, $1.75 is $1.75. Uh, the metric system is in decimals because they go by tens, um, and so forth. Uh, for measuring with fractions, we could say carpentry, measuring wood to cut, that sort of thing. Cooking, you know, we use a quarter cup of milk, we don't use 0.25 cups of milk. So the discussion kind of went in that direction to just get a feel as to where do we use decimals, where do we use fractions. So, let's move on to example two. And it says, using place values to write terminating decimals as equivalent fractions, what is the value of the number 2.25? How can this number be written as a fraction or mixed number? So we don't say 2.25, we say 2 and 25 thousandths. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my word here document where I saved this and I showed this in class. It is really important to note this right here before we move any further. We need to know that what we're dealing with in this class is all these values over here. So decimal to the right. We need to know tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and that's the name of them, and that's how we say them. And if we just read a decimal, it will tell us how to write it as a fraction. So now that I go back to here, this is 2 and 25 thousandths. So I write it like this, 2 and 25, or I'm sorry, hundreds. It's 25 tenths, hundreds. 2 and 25 hundredths is 25 over 100. Okay? Then it says, B says to rewrite the fraction in its simplest form, showing all steps that you use. Okay, so I can, I'll just leave the 2 as is for now, and we'll come back to it. And I'll put 25 over 100 over here, and I want to reduce it. So I'm going to divide the top and bottom by the same number. It has to be done by the same number to reduce it, so I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 5. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. 100 divided by 5 is 20. Okay. And I'm just showing this because we want to get it down to the most basic, all right? So we can do it again. Divide by 5 a second time. And 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. So it's 2 and 1 quarter, okay? Now I just want you to realize that this step and this step were two steps that were not necessary, but it's not, it's not wrong to do it in two steps. I could have also done 25 over 100 and realized that 25 would go into 100 evenly. So if I divide the top and the bottom by 25, then I get 25 divided by 25, which is 1, and 100 divided by 25, which is 4, and that's what I got in two steps over here. So the fraction in simplest form is 2. 2.25 is 2. So step C says, what is the value of the number 2.025? How can this number be written as a mixed number? So the first thing I want to do is read it using this terminology. So it's not 2.025, it's 2 and 10 hundred thousand. 2 and 25 thousand. Tenth, hundred, thousand. Okay? Third decimal place. Thousand. Okay? So two and twenty-five one thousandths. 
Okay, so I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 25. And I'm going to bring this two over. And 25 divided by 25 is 1. And 1,000 divided by 25 is 40. So it's 2 and 1, 40. Rewrite the fraction in its simplest form, showing all steps that you use. Okay, so I've already done that. So this is the answer to C. And what I should do is just move this down here. Okay, so we're going to get two. 140 is the reduced to 2 and 25 one thousandths. Okay? Exercise 1. Okay, now take the time in class to do this. Pause the video, do these four problems, and when everybody's done and has had a conversation about what they got with their group members, come back and watch the video. Okay. Now that we're done with those, let's go through them. So there are three decimal places here. It says use place value to convert each terminating denominator or decimal to a fraction. Then rewrite each fraction into its simplest form. Okay. A. 0 0.218. 0 0.218. 0 0.218. So that's not 0 0.218. We're going to read it as 0 and 218 tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay, so it's 218 divided by 1,000. 218 is even. 1,000 is even. Even numbers are divisible by 2. 218 divided by 2 is 109. 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. 109 is prime. So that was not reduced. Okay. B. 0 0.16. That is 16. 0 and 16 tenth hundredth. Okay. 16 over 100. They're both even. Divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 10 divided by 2, it, or 100 divided by 2 is 50. Okay, we still have an even helper and even. We can divide again by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 50 divided by 2 is 25. We cannot reduce that any further. This is our answer. C. 2.72 is red. 2 and 72 tenths hundredths. 72 over 100. They're both even, so I'm going to divide by 2. 72 divided by 2 is 36. 100 divided by 2 is 50. Even, even, divide by 2. Divide by 2. 36 divided by 2 is 18. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Even, odd, can't divide by 2. Then you try 3. 6 times 3 is 18. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 won't go into 25. 5 will go into 25. 5 won't go into 18. This is reduced. D. 0 0.0005 is red, 0 and 5 tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths. 5 ten thousandths is like this. If I have a number divisible by 5, or ending in 5, and a number ending in 0, they are both divisible by 5. 
five divided by five is one. Ten thousand divided by five is two thousand. So that is one two thousand. Okay. Okay, so now that we've done A through D, let's pause a moment and I want to discuss what just happened. So looking at these answers here, I'm going to put this back up like this. We had a thousand here, we had a hundred here, we had a hundred here, we had ten thousand here. Now if we go back to this word document, I've typed this up. It says, what do you notice about the denominators of fractions that represent each decimal place? And the answer to that is, is the denominators are all powers of ten. So if I go back, 1,000 is 10 to the third power. 100 is 10 squared. 100 is 10 squared or 10 times 10. And 10,000 is 10 to the fourth. Okay? So 10 is 2 times 5 or 10 to the 1. 100 is 2 to the squared times 5 squared. And 100 is 10 squared. So 2 squared times 5 squared equals 10 squared. And then 1,000 is 2 cubed times 5 cubed, okay? So just remember that your powers mean 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times 5 times 5 is what that third 3 means up there. So 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10, so 10 to the third equals 2 to the third times 5 to the third. Okay, this is leading up to how many zeros. So it says what prime factors make up the powers of 10? So the powers of 10 contain only the factors 2 and 5. And in each case, the number of factors 2 and 5 are equal to the number of factors of 10. Okay, so the number of factors equals the number of factors of 10. So if I have two factors of 2 and 5, I have two factors of 10. Three factors of 2 and 5, three factors of 10. How can the prime factorization of the powers of 10 be used to write fractions in decimal form? Well, we can find an equivalent fraction whose denominator is a power of 10, and then write that decimal representation using a place value. So that's what I'm going to explain now. So this was three decimal places. So that is 10 to the third. And 10 to the third is a thousand. This was two decimal places. This is 100, which is 10 squared. So two decimal places, 10 to the second. This is four decimal places. 10 to the fourth is 10,000. Okay. So, what is a decimal? Okay, so it says, what are decimals? Well, it's, it's derived from a Latin word decimus, which means tenths. So it's really basically tenths. So if we think of a dime, that is 10 cents. Okay, there are 10 dimes in one dollar. There are 10 dimes in one dollar. Everybody knows that. 10 dimes in a dollar. So I divided a dollar into tenths. 10 dimes. Now if I divide each dime into pennies, there are 10 pennies in a dime. So if there are 10 pennies in a dime and there are 10 dimes in a dollar, there are 100 pennies in a dollar. So we just keep breaking it up. So if I took a tenth of a penny, there's no such thing in dollar amounts, but a tenth of a penny would be one one thousandth of a dollar. And so on and so on. The only place I can think of where we use tenths for dollar value is at the gas pump. If you ever notice, more so in the States than here. You'll see gas. 289 and 9 tenths. Okay. They actually go out to three decimal places for charging your fare. Okay. B. Use the meaning of decimal to relate decimal place values. Okay, so here's how it works. If I have a number, I put one. If I put one way out here and zero here. And then I split this. There's a half. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, and so on and so on. Point 0.6, point 0.7, point 0.8, point 0.9, point 
let's put my one here because it's not uniform. Okay, like that. Okay. So that is one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tenths, and one. Now if I come back and I split this up into ten pieces here, that is now this piece right here, the first one is 0 0.01 or 1 100. It's a tenth of the tenth. Okay. So this is used a lot more in the metric system than it is in our measurement system because once each and we don't have a quarter and eighth and sixteenths and thirty seconds and sixty fourths. Uh, the metric system goes by tens, which is much easier. Okay. So the meaning of decimal relating decimal place values. The more I break this up, now if I zoomed in and looked and put 10 spaces between all these, it'd be 1 1,000. Okay, now it says write the number for C. It says write the number 3 over 100 as a decimal. Describe your process. Well, I know if I come back here, okay, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. If we keep going back to that, I have hundredths. So if I look at this, hundredth is 2 decimal places. So that three has to be the second decimal place. This is three one hundredths. Okay. The most common mistake here is writing this. Okay. This is not three one hundredths. This is if we ignore that zero, this is three tenths or thirty one hundredths. Okay, so this is not three one hundredths, it's gotta be point zero three. Write the number three over twenty as a decimal and describe your process. Okay. Well Houston we have a problem. We are looking for tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, not twenties. So if I take three over twenty and I think to myself, self, how do I get a hundred? Is it possible? Twenty times something equal 100 and we should come up with 5. 20 times 5 equals 100 so if I multiply the bottom by 5 I multiply the top by 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Now I can write that as a decimal. 15 tenths hundredths. 15 two decimal places. Okay? E. Write the number 10 25ths as a decimal. 10 over 25 times something over something equals, and I want a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000 here. We usually like to round, work our way up. So if we go backwards, we start dealing with decimals and fractions. So 25 times 4 is 100. 10 times 4 is 40. So I could write this as 40 one hundredths, kind of like up here, but what I would tend to do is get rid of these zeros and reduce first, and now it's four tenths, which is point four. That zero is meaningless at the end, but it's not meaningless if it's in between the decimal and the number. That zero has meaning. This one kind of doesn't. Point four zero is the same as point four. So it's four tenths, it's 40. So it's always a good idea to do this. Reduce down to tens, and then if it's possible, and leave it in terms of tens. Okay, next one. Eight over 40. Okay, so if I multiply 40 times two, I get 80. If I multiply 40 times three, I get 120. I jumped over 100, so it doesn't go in evenly. So now I, can reduce it, okay, divide it by 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 40 divided by 2 is 20, okay, there are many, many ways to do this, this is just one way that I thought of while I was looking at this, now I see a 20 and I can get it to be 100 by multiplying it by 5, so 20 times 5 is 100, 4 times 5 is 20. And then if I reduce that, it is 2 tenths. Okay. 
exercise two. Convert each fraction to a decimal using equivalent fractions. Now we're starting to run into issues. Three over 16. 16 won't go into 100. If I divide it by two, I'm down to eight, but that's a decimal. Divide it again, it's down to four. We're getting into a messy decimal. So now I'm going to explain to you. You've seen it last year, I hope. If you take 16 and do a factor tree, I get 2 times 8, which is 2 times 4, which is 2 times 2, and that is 2 to the 4th power. Okay? We want to get 10 as our base. So I need to multiply by 5. 5 times 2 is 10, and the power has to be the same. So I'm going to multiply by 5 to the 4th, top and bottom. Okay, so that's going to equal 10 to the 4th. I actually told you that earlier in this lesson. And then 5 to the 4th power is 5 times 5, which is 25, times 5, which is 125. That's three fives. And then one more 5 is 625. So 3... Three times 625. So that is going to equal multiply that by 3. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 6 times 3 is 18. So I get 1875. And 10 to the 4th just means 10 times 10, which is 800, times 10, which is 8,000, times 10, which is 10,000. Okay. Or the, this tells me how many zeros. So it's 1875 over 10,000. Don't try to reduce this. You're going to get this. It's asking for the decimal. So we're done. It's 1875 ten thousands, four decimal places. So it's 0.1875. That is my decimal answer. Okay, on to the next one. 7 divided by 5. Okay, I'll show you a different way from this one. Yes, we can do this up here, but I'm going to show you a different way. 7 fifths means 7 divided by 5. 7. 7 divided by 5. 1 times 5 is 5, the remainder of 2. Put a decimal, bring down a 0. 5 times 4 is 20. And the remainder's gone. So my answer is okay. Very easy on that one. This one wouldn't have been so easy, but we still could have done it long division. There is your example with long division. Okay. Eleven over thirty-two. This one, I, I wouldn't want to divide 32 into 11. It would be a very long division problem. I'm going to go back to my factor tree. I'll do it over here. 32 is 2 times 16. Which is 2 times 8. Which is 2 times 4. Which is 2 times 2. Okay, sorry about that. The bell rang and I had to put this on pause for a while. So now we have one, two, three, four, five twos. So 32 is two. Okay. 32. There we go. Now my pen's working. 32 is two. Oops, that's it. And we want a base of 10, so now I have to multiply by 5 to the 5th. So it's going to be 11 over 2 to the 5th times 5 to the 5th over 5 to the 5th. Okay. So now when we multiply 11 times 5 to the 5th, that is actually 11 times 3,125, 5 to the 5th, divided by 10. And this is going to end up being 3, 1, 2, 5 times 11, which is 5 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 1, 1 times 3, place value 1 times 5, 1 times 2, 1 times 1, 1 times 3, we get 5, 7, 3.
This tells us how many decimal places there are. One, two, three, four, five. So the answer is 34,375 and hundred thousand. Okay. Crazy number. All right, 35 divided by 50. I see a 50 here and I can see how it would be easy to get to 100 in the denominator. And our goal is to get multiples of 100 in our denominators. So 35 divided by 50 times 2 over 2 equals 70 over 100. Okay? 50 times 2 is 100. Then I can reduce this to now just say that 7 tenths. Eight, seven. Much easier than 130 seconds. Okay, that's the end of lesson 13. Go do your